Okay, so my name is Abir Al-Bahrawi. I'm a PhD student from City University in London and the Allen Turing Institute. And I'm flying all the way from London today to speak to you about my first two years of PhD work. And as you can see, it's more on the level of the market and competition between cryptocurrencies and not the protocol side. However, I promise I will make it relevant to also the protocol side. So luckily, I won't have to really talk to you about what is Bitcoin, what is cryptocurrencies, and, and what do we actually mean by Bitcoin. And I'm also not going to convince you that there is growing importance of cryptocurrencies, because you're here. But what I want to show you is that there is growing relevance for other cryptocurrencies. And that's really relevant for research specifically. So what we have here is that in the beginning, we had Bitcoin mostly generating most of the volume in the market. But then we have this kind of gap that's increasing. So from this kind of complete Bitcoin domination to more cryptocurrencies that entering the marketing and generating volume in the market. And if we did the same practice for the top five and for the top 10, we can always see some of similar behavior. And what does this mean is that it's not only Bitcoin, it's not only Ethereum and Ripple, it's not only the first top cryptocurrencies. And that's why what we were thought about is that we don't want to look at only one cryptocurrencies and we don't want to look only at few cryptocurrencies in our research. What we would like to look at is have a global view, look at all the cryptocurrencies that exist, which right now more than 1,500 cryptocurrencies. Are they just noise in the market or they're actually something important to look at? And that was our focus. So we decided to look at a global view of the market dynamics and not only a, a specific ones. Look at the evolution of the market. So as you can see, it's not something that's very same behavior all the time. In the beginning, it has specific characteristics, and maybe these characteristics changed. And finally, what is the competition between these cryptocurrencies? Are they actually competing, or they are just there and entering without doing any kind of effect on the market? To do this, we looked at CoinMarketCap. I'm sure that many of you know it already. It's a cryptocurrency uh, website that collects all kind of data on cryptocurrencies. We extract all the data that they have. They have data on the price. They have data on the circulating supply. What is the volume uh, generated and uh, average and weighted from different exchanges, which is more than 1,000 uh, exchange. And they also have the market cap, which is just the multiplication of the price multiplied by the circulating supply. And then we just introduce the market share, which is the normalized of the market cap. And then what we found is the market was expanding, nothing really new here. But what was important is that as it was expanding in a super exponential way, Bitcoin has this kind of gap between all the market cap that's generating, which led us to think that Bitcoin is losing. So Bitcoin market share was actually decreasing while it's getting all the hype, it's getting all the attention, many of the focus of the researchers on, but it was actually losing. And what we thought about is, so is this just because there are new cryptocurrencies are entering the market and that's why Bitcoin is losing or there is actually something different? So what we did is we looked at other, the top five cryptocurrencies, excluding Bitcoin. And we tried to find if their market share is also increasing or not. And what we found, it was actually increasing, which means that it's not just a mere change of the market. It's, that it's just the fact that they were stealing some market share from Bitcoin. But this was not satisfactory for us. We decided that since there seemed to be some sort of competition in the market, can we look at other properties in the market that can characterize this kind of competition? And can we see the evolution of this kind of uh, char characteristics and properties? So we looked at, first, the number of cryptocurrencies that enter and actively trading in the market. And as you can see, there are cryptocurrencies that keep increasing in the market, but the active ones are pretty much stable. 
And that's because we have a similar death and birth rate. So cryptocurrencies enter the, the market, but in the same time, there is a death rate for them. So they come to the cryptocurrency market, stay there for a couple of weeks, and then leave, which makes the situation that we have a stable number of cryptocurrencies which are actively traded all the time. Then I'm going through all of and each one of these uh, figures, but then we started to look at different ways how can we characterize the competition in the market. And this, we did it for each year that we have data from, so we collected the data from 2013 till um, the back at the time of the publication, which is May 2017. And don't worry, I'm going to show you another version of this figure later from the data just used from last week. So what we did is we looked at the different time snapshots, and we also looked at the last, time, last week. And what we found, it was consistent. So basically, the characteristics are not being changed. They are consistent across time, although the market is being expanded. So let's start with the market share distribution. And the market share distribution represents the wealth, how the wealth is distributed between cryptocurrencies. And what you can find here is that basically Bitcoin has all the market share and the rest of the cryptocurrencies are competing in a very low market share. This was, we were able to fit this uh, distribution with a power law fit and it has a, a 1.5 alpha. And it's important to remember this because we are going to build on uh, this kind of distribution later. We also looked at the ranking distribution, which is mainly how the ranks are taken from the market share. And again, you can see that the first rank, which is occupied always by, big, by Bitcoin, has all the market share, and the rest of the cryptocurrencies are competing in the rest, which is showing that, and this is consistent with all the years, which is showing that pretty much Bitcoin has been stable in terms of how it's wealth for the cryptocurrencies, but still there are something, some competition going in the rest of the cryptocurrencies. And then we look at the average lifetime per rank. And what we did here is that we looked at each rank and we tried to say how long does a cryptocurrency occupy this rank? So how often do they change their ranks? What we mean by this is that, for example, the first rank is basically has been always occupied by Bitcoin, so it has the maximum number of weeks. But for the rest of the ranks, what we have is the, for example, rank number three, you can have something like 20 to, three, uh, to 30 weeks where cryptocurrency stays. So basically, they change in every 23 weeks the, the number, the, the ranking in this rank. So what we mean by this is that while the first ranking is pretty stable, but the rest of the ranks, there is competition on them. There are more cryptocurrencies who are competing to go to this rank, and they're actually succeeding. Then we look at the turnover for the top ranked. And what we mean by this is we looked at how many cryptocurrencies made it to the top five or top 10 or top 20 and, and so on. And the dashed line here is that there is no turnover, which means that every cryptocurrency enters a specific rank and always stay there. But you can see that for all the years, there are dynamics. The cryptocurrencies are changing the ranks. There are cryptocurrencies who are make it to the top five and then drops, and then make it to the top 10 and then drops, which tells, tell us again that there is an actual competition between these cryptocurrencies. So, so since, uh, and, and this is an updated figure from the last week for the same figure that we had for the market share distribution. And what we thought about, can we model these dynamics? Since we have a stable dynamics, and since we have um, a nice distribution that we can fit, can we find a model that can replicate this kind of dynamics and make us capable of saying something about what are the drivers between this competition? 
And that's where we got introduced to the progny distribution. And the progny distribution is a, a term that's being used in ecology. And I don't want you to be surprised, but what I'm going to speak next about is something called the neutral model. And it's mainly being used in ecology, genetics, English words, and different other usages. However, we were able to uh, use it in cryptocurrencies as well. So stay tuned. So what is the neutral model? The neutral model is a model that's basically treating all the species, everyone who is in our population, as equal. There is no much difference between them. There is a, no difference between uh, the species except on a per capita basis. So it's following a simple sampling theory where they sample every time from the previous population. How does it work? So we have T0 which is the first time step that we have in the first population. And we have species, um, different species and different individuals. And each species has different, has number of individual in this population. So we record this number of individuals. Then we move to the next time step. And what, all what we do is we sample randomly from the previous population. And that's why the high, the, in the, the species who have higher individual in the previous population will have higher probability to appear in the next population. And again, what we will find here that we have here two new species, which we were calling mutation. So they were not there before in, in our population. They are newly introduced. And then we keep logging the number of individual per, uh, per um, species. And then we can construct, again, what's called progeny distribution, which is only the summation. So instead of looking at time and at only one time step, I'm looking at the entire history and trying to remember how many each species had. And then we keep doing this. How this is relevant to our cryptocurrency market? So what we did is that we consider species as cryptocurrencies. And they are fighting on dollars, which is the individuals that we have. And then we considered that each generation that we have is a one week, which is the time step that we have in our data. And then that we have a mutation, and this mutation is basically a new cryptocurrency. So what we mapped is we have a bunch of cryptocurrencies are competing to get the dollars, which will make them be richer and have higher market capitalization. And a new cryptocurrency is introduced to the market, means that there is a mutation happens, happened in the system. And each generation is just mapped from our data. Then we start by informing the model. And what we mean by informing the model is that we take, we take all the parameters that we uh, need for the model from the data that we have. So what we assume is that since in the beginning we have only one cryptocurrency, which, which is Bitcoin, what we do is that we assume that in our model, we start with only one species. And then we uh, get our population size, which is um, 10 to the power of 5, which is mapping to a specific number, to 100,000 100, in our um, data. Um, these numbers are not used like chosen just arbitrary. We actually have in the paper more details on what, we hap what happens if we change the, the numbers and change the parameters. So we have some uh, test, uh, test on this. And finally, we got the mutation rate as well from the data. So we found that on average, we have seven cryptocurrencies who enter each week. And what we also tuned in the model is that instead of starting with one individual each time, we also got from the data the average number of market cap, uh, the average market cap that a new cryptocurrency entered with. And no surprise. So we found that the model replicates um, the data, basically. And this is what we had in the paper at the time of the publication. And this is what we have right now. So as you can see, 
that it was able to replicate all the uh, panels right now, except for the market share um, decrease, it still the model was able to predict the loss of domination of Bitcoin. However, it has a linear uh, prediction, and that's why this kind of nonlinearity was not depicted. But what does it mean? So I showed you that some ecological model is, can map and replicate the data. Why this is important? So the main thing about neutral model is that it doesn't care about differences between species, which means, I'm really sorry for everyone here, but investors, when they try to invest in cryptocurrencies, they really don't care about technologies. There is no much of a difference between they see they basically sample randomly based on market share. So, and that's what was implied by our uh, model. That's why also we replicated the results that we have uh, when we looked on separations of cryptocurrencies. So we looked on cryptocurrencies who are deploying proof of stake and proof of work, and we didn't find much of a difference of the distribution of the wealth between them as well, which is again, confirms the same um, results that's coming from the model. The second thing is that Bitcoin domino domination is not something that's guaranteed anymore. And I think many of you already know this because it already dropped more than 50% of the market share. But it also means that, given the model, is that it's only domination, but there is also other cryptocurrencies who are being competing on this uh, market. So... That's what I basically show you in my first part, which is we didn't look only at a couple of cryptocurrencies. Um, we tried to investigate more than uh, 1,500 cryptocurrencies. And we looked at their dynamics from um, April 2013 till October 2018. And also, uh, we were able to model this kind of competition dynamics and show you what kind, of dry, dry, what kind of drivers can maybe be uh, the underlying drivers of this uh, competition? So this work is already published, and you will find many details about uh, the model, about um, how we did the fitting, and if you need also the data, if you would like to have a look. And so all the details that you would like to have and of course, you can approach me if you have any other questions. So, so what are our next steps um, after this is that we are looking at three different uh, projects right now. And the first thing is the market inefficiency and basically how can we predict the, the market. The second thing is if we are actually saying that technology is not, does not really matter that much for investments. So what are the other drivers? Is it possible that we have social signals that maybe um, influence people's decisions? And the last part is the evolution of the blockchain transaction. So looking at the growth of the transaction network of the, crypto of the Bitcoin specifically, and how can it uh, react to specific market shocks? I will show you um, our work from the market inefficiency. The other two parts are um, still work in progress. So can we predict the prices? And machine learning, of course, comes. So what we did is that we tried to think about how can we predict the prices in the cryptocurrency market. And we deployed machine learning algorithms in thinking, OK, so right now I am in the decision of I want to buy certain cryptocurrencies. Which one should I buy? And this means which one I'm expecting to is going to increase. So the question is simply, what is the price of Ethereum, for example, tomorrow? We deployed three different methods in order to do this. The first method is that we have a time series. For example, if I want to predict the Ethereum price, I feed my model with Ethereum time series. So I look at the volume, the price, the market share, the, market, uh, the, the rank, and the lifetime of a cryptocurrency. And I look with a specific time window. And uh, I feed the model with the mean and the standard deviation of these parameters. And then I feed it to uh, an XGBoost machine learning algorithm. And 
Again, you will find many details about this in the paper. And then I predict that Ethereum is going to be tomorrow of, of a value of 0.35 to Bitcoin. We are predicting everything in terms of Bitcoin and not dollars. The, me the second method that we use is that instead of using only Ethereum time series to predict Ethereum price, we use Ethereum, Ripple, Dash, and other cryptocurrencies that are being traded at the same point. So I am feeding all this information again to my XG boost and trying to predict the price. The last method that uh, we have is that we use exactly the same method one, so I only feed the algorithm my uh, Ethereum uh, data to predict the Ethereum price, but I use instead LSTM neural network and see what happens. So what we find here is we were able to predict the prices with different values and different, uh, different, va different I don't know, changes maybe uh, of quality. But what I want to stress is that we tried to optimize the parameters based on usual matrices that use being used in portfolio optimization, which is geometric mean and sharp ratio. And what we compared our model with, which is the baseline here, is basically just looking at the previous price. And that was already so good. So by looking only to the previous prices of a cryptocurrency, you can predict the future of the cryptocurrencies, which tells you a lot about the predictability of this market and its efficiency. You can find more details about uh, our work. It's still on the archive, so it's not published yet. It's still on review, but we would really appreciate uh, any comments or any questions, and you can find all the details about the tuning of the parameters, how, what we used, and, and which algorithms and everything. Uh, here are my amazing collaborators and my supervisor, and please do touch. And that's me, and if you ever have a question about any of the work or future work, please just ping me a message. Thank you.